Here's a final problem involving the, the use of KVL. And uh, this problem is recorded separately just because it's more involved than the, the first two examples. And before solving this, I just want to um, make a note that to anyone who's new to circuits, you may look at the solution um, that I'll present and think, I would have no idea how to do that. How would I ever think to solve it this way? And I want to reassure you that actually this kind of problem can be more challenging than some of the, uh, the problems we'll encounter when we do the formal nodal or mesh analysis because those are really procedural based. You don't strictly need intuition to solve them. Uh, intuition can oftentimes help you reduce the complexity of one of those circuits so that you don't have to write as many equations, but ultimately you, you use some nodal or mesh analysis formal procedure. Here, it's more uh, an ad hoc problem where we've been given some information about uh, this, this circuit. Uh, in fact, everything is specified in the circuit except we don't know the value of this current source on the right. However, uh, we can still solve it because instead of the value of that current source, we've been given the value of the current going um, being supplied by the 60 volt source. And so we actually have enough information specified to solve it, but we're not going to solve it by writing a system of equations like we normally would. We're just more, like I said, it's going to be ad hoc. And to someone new at circuits, uh, they may find this. Uh, a little unnerving because it doesn't seem like it's following any formal procedure. So I'm going to try to give you my rationale for how I'm going to solve it so that you don't feel like it's quite so ad hoc. So the basic idea here is we're looking for Vx. Uh, this voltage here on the right side, we'll call this Vx here. And uh, the approach I'm going to take is I want to write a KVL equation that involves Vx and where all the other branch voltages in that equation are known uh, so that only Vx is unknown and so that I can actually write an expression and solve for Vx. So there's several KVL equations you could write because there's a loop here, there's a loop, oops, there's a loop here and then there's the overall loop. Right? And I'm going to do the overall loop and the reason I'm going to do the overall loop is because um, I am hopeful, and I see this is where a little experience comes in handy. Uh, when I go around this loop, I need, know, need to know the voltage across this branch, which I do at 60 volts. I need to know the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor, which I can easily find because we were given the current of 5 amps. So 5 times 8 is 40 volts. So I know that voltage. And I don't know, let me, the one thing I don't know is the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor. Okay, so that's what we really need uh, to find. Once I know that, I can find Vx by writing KVL. And I'll go ahead and write that equation. Starting at the bottom left here, I'll go clockwise. We enter the negative node, so I put minus 60, plus 40, plus V4, plus Vx is equal to 0. And so we can write, therefore, Vx is equal to 60 minus 40 or 20 minus V4. So we need V4. All right. Now V4 is equal to, by Ohm's law, 4 ohms times I4. Okay, I4. So now we need I4. All right, if I know I4, I can get V4. And if I have V4, I can find Vx. So how do we get I4? Well, to find I4, okay, find I4 by writing KCL at node A. All right, so we have five amps coming in, we're given that. And we have I4 leaving. The current going through here, down through the 10 ohm resistor, is going to be the voltage across that 10 ohm resistor, V10, divided by 10 ohms. Okay, so I could write uh, I4 
I can say the current leaving through I4 is equal to the current entering through the 5 amps and the V10 over 10 ohms. So I'm going to go ahead, well let's just write it strictly because we're, we're still new at this. We'll say, let's sum all the currents leaving. So I4 leaves plus V10 over 10 ohms leaves and minus 5 amps leave. And now we can write I4 is equal to 5 amps minus V10 over 10 ohms. All right. So now we need V10. We're just chasing after this. We're eventually going to find something that we can determine and then we'll just back calculate all these values. So we need V10. How can we find V10? Well, V10 is itself part of another KVL loop. Right? We have this KVL. So, and it turns out we know those two voltages, right? We know the 60 volts and we've calculated that that 8 ohms has 40 volts. So with, uh, with those two voltages I can find V10. Let's write KVL. It's minus 60 plus 40 volts plus V10 is equal to 0. So therefore V10 is equal to 60 minus 40 or 20 volts. Alright, so now we can feed that back and we can calculate uh, uh, let's see, we'll go back here and we can solve this to be 5 amps minus 20 volts over 10 ohms which is 2 amps, so we have 3 amps and now we can say that this is going to be equal to 4 ohms times 3 amps or 12 volts and now we can write this Vx is 20 volts minus 12 volts and so therefore Vx is equal to 8 volts and that is our solution. So to recap the approach was to uh, find a KVL loop that involved uh, Vx and for which only Vx was unknown but when we wrote this, we realized that we don't know all the other voltages. Uh, specifically, we don't know V4. So to find V4, we need to know the, volt, the current flowing through that, uh, that 4 ohm resistor. And to find uh, that current, I4, we needed to write a KCL equation at node A. And to solve for I4 using that KCL equation, we needed to know the other two branch currents, mainly the 5 amps going through the 8 ohms and then the current flowing through the 10 ohms. We didn't know the current going through the 10 ohms, so we had to calculate it by determining the voltage V10 across it. And we did that by writing a KVL equation for the leftmost mesh. And when we wrote that KVL equation, fortunately, we knew the other two branch voltages of 60 and 40. And so we solved for V10, gave us 20 volts, could then use that to calculate the current through the 10 ohms, which was 2 amps. Could use that in our KCL equation to find, ultimately, the current flowing through the 4 ohms, I4 being 3 amps. And that led us to being able to calculate for V4, which was our one unknown voltage in the original KVL equation uh, which was needed to find Vx.